Good evening, this is Rosemary with a news flash tonight. On Monday evening, tragedy struck when a collision between Kenyatta University bus and a truck occurred in Maunga area near Voi along the Nairobi Mombasa Highway. This incident resulted in 11 fatalities, among them being Kenyatta University students. 21 others sustained severe injuries, while four people experienced minor injuries. Following the accident, those injured were swiftly moved to nearby hospitals for medical attention, while those critically injured were airlifted for specialized treatment. University officials, including Vice Chancellor Professor Paul Wainaina, promptly visited the Moy County Referral Hospital in Bowie to assess the condition of affected students and the staff. In response to the situation, the university organized air ambulance services to transfer critically injured patients to other medical facilities. Hospital arrangements were made for casualties, with some being admitted to the Aga Khan University Hospital in Mombasa, while others were transferred to Avenue Hospital and Kenyatta University Teaching Referral Research Hospital, both in Nairobi. Additionally, arrangements were made to transport the deceased to KU Teaching and Referral Hospital in Nairobi. To provide assistance and support, the university dispatched a team consisting of doctors, medical personnel, security officers, and wellness officers to VOI. It's important to note that the student and staff involved were on their way to Mombasa for an academic trip when the accident occurred. This tragic incident emphasizes the significance of road safety measures and underscores the need for prompt emergency response in such unfortunate circumstances. The university's swift action to providing medical assistance to support those affected deserves recognition. Meanwhile, President William Ruto has signed the contentious affordable housing bill into law, endorsing it at State House Nairobi on Tuesday. This move resurrects the unpopular housing levy deductions, which will now be deducted from both employers and employee monthly salaries. The bill, which passed through both the Senate and the National Assembly last week with various amendments, including involvement of county governments, reinstates the levy declared unconstitutional by the High Court in 2023. The Court of Appeal has upheld this decision, citing the absence of legal framework for its introduction. Despite its legal setback, Ruto's government maintained that the suspension of the levy provided an opportunity to restructure the bill, which now establishes a new legal framework for its implementation. The legislation outlines four categories of affordable housing. Social housing unit for individuals earning less than 20,000 shillings. Middle class housing for those earning above 49,000 shillings. General affordable housing for individuals earning between 20,000 shillings and 149,000 shillings. And rural housing for residents living outside urban areas. Key implementing institutions include the Ministry for Housing, National Housing Corporation, NHC, county governments, the private entities approved by the Affordable Housing Board, the funding management body. Furthermore, the bill prioritizes slum areas for constructing affordable housing units and aims to prevent multiple allocations of the housing units. It also emphasizes the use of locally sourced construction materials and labor from local communities to stimulate economic growth. The signing of the Affordable Housing Bill underscores the government's commitment to tackling housing challenges in Kenya. However, the reintroduction of housing levy deductions may face resistance from citizens worry of its financial implications. A post-mortem procedure has confirmed that journalist Rita Tinina's death was due to severe pneumonia. Her sudden death has deeply saddened her colleagues and the media fraternity in general. Family spokesperson Timothy Jaga confirmed that the examination conducted on Tuesday by government pathologist Peter Ndegua and family pathologist Dr. Michaka concluded the cause of death. The family has expressed contentment with the findings while requesting privacy during this mourning period. Rita Tinina, who served as an output producer for broadcast platforms at the Nation Media Group, passed away on Sunday, March 17, 2024. According to reports from the Kililesho police station, Rita was discovered and unresponsive in her residence. Despite being reported well on Saturday, she failed to attend work on Sunday.
Rita, age 46, had a distinguished career spanning over two decades in the media industry. She returned to NTV in October 2023 after serving as a senior reporter at KTN, part of the Standard Group. The media fraternity mourns Rita's loss, acknowledging her significant contributions to journalism. As the family grieves, it's paramount for colleagues and the public to respect their privacy and to extend support in their time of sorrow. Rita's legacy will endure through her work and the fond memories shared by those who knew her. May she rest in peace. Elsewhere, Frida Mokaya Buyani confidently assumed the role of Chief Registrar of the Judiciary, a position of immense significance within the legal framework of the country. The Judicial Service Commission has meticulously chosen Mokaya after a rigorous selection process that saw seven distinguished candidates competing for the prestigious position. This position became vacant following Anne Amadi's retirement earlier in the year. Out of a pool of 43 applicants, Mokaya's experience, expertise, and dedication set her apart. Her journey to this pinnacle of her career was marked by decades of unwavering dedication to the legal profession. Starting as a senior principal magistrate, Mokaya had steadily climbed the ranks, showcasing not only her legal prowess, but also impeccable leadership qualities. With over 27 years of experience, she brings to the system a wealth of knowledge and a deep understanding of the complexities within the legal system. Her appointment marked not only a personal triumph, but also a significant milestone in the ongoing pursuit for a fair and transparent legal system in the country. George Muragara, the chair of the Justice and Legal Affairs Committee in the National Assembly, has clarified the standing of Chief Administrative Secretaries, CAS, within the government hierarchy. According to Muragara, CASs are not considered state of officers like cabinet secretaries and principal secretaries. Mm -hmm. Speaking during a panel discussion on Citizen TV's Daybreak show, Moragara explained that Parliament revised a previous bill to ensure CASs were not categorized as state officers. He stressed that while CSs and PSs hold the status of state officers, CASs are regarded as public officers. Muragara indicated that CASs will not be mandated to appear before the parliament due to their lesser level of responsibility. Instead, their primary role will be to assist CSs and PSs delegating tasks to them. He further affirmed that the hierarchy will follow the sequence of CS, PS, and CAS. Interior Cabinet Secretary Kithure Kindiki recently made a statement asserting that the number of fatalities from road accident in a single year has exceeded the death toll from COVID-19 in Kenya between 2020 and 2022. Kindiki pointed out that while the pandemic claimed 4,600 lives over two and a half years, road accidents had resulted in 4,000 deaths in just one year. The number of our people that we are losing every day from road traffic accident. Idadi ya wa Kenya ambao wanakufa kwa sababu ya ajari ya barabarani ni takribani watu elfu nne kila mwaka. These remarks from the interior CS come in the aftermath of a tragic road accident involving a Kenyatta University bus where 11 students lost their lives and 21 others were seriously injured. This was after a collision between their bus and a truck near Voi on the Nairobi-Mombasa Highway. That's all we had from our news desk tonight. Don't forget to follow our social media handles below your screen. Reporting for Elja Africa, this has been Rosemary Zembe. Have a good night.